Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. It's not easy being vulnerable, especially after experiencing so much hurt and betrayal. But the more we share our stories, the more hope people get for a better and brighter future. Today on our space, we hear from some brave OPs. Our first OP says it how it is. My girlfriend of five years cheated. Most of our relationship we spent living together. We lived in three different countries together, about three and a half years. We managed long distance the rest of our time together. The last time I saw her, it was for her mom's birthday. I had a great relationship with her family. A band of mutual friends and I traveled together to their hometown. It was a three day visit. Since the first evening, she displayed troubling, almost hysterical behavior, asking for attention every second, making an issue out of everything I did, including paying attention to and having conversations with her parents. Her sexual drive was higher than it had ever been, to the point of me not liking it because of how forced it felt. Long story short, I caught her seeking attention from other men before, which is basically cheating, but made a mistake to take her back once she cried her way back to me, denying she did anything more than texting. I wanted to believe her, but I never truly did. Second night of that birthday visit, her phone was blasting with messages overnight. She was sound asleep. A guy who she supposedly blocked. Password changed. I pack my stuff. Leave a single message. I know. I leave the apartment. I head straight to the airport and fly home. I never spoke to her again. God knows she tried. Never. It's been seven months. I am single and at peace now. Let's see what the community has to say about this. Brute Truth says, Smart decision. The OP replies, It wasn't easy. Messages and calls came my way, but I thought I should focus on myself this time, truly, and never responded to any of them. It was a good decision. If this means anything to any of you, yes, you feel like ish for a long time, unattractive, low self-esteem, or whatnot. But once you disconnect from your emotions a bit and start healing, rationality kicks in and you start having fun being alone. I barely talk to anyone in detail. Of course, I talk to my family. We have another thought from the community. Wellman81 says, Good for you, OP. That's called having self-respect and dignity. Next time, though, when they display red flags of being a possible cheater, drop them immediately. Edit to add. Red flags include, but not limited to, 1. Male friends they are too close to and party with. 2. Unwarranted contact with exes. 3. Flirting and constantly making eye contact with other men. 4. Calling your boundaries too controlling. 5. Having lunches and drinks alone with male coworkers. 6. Refusing transparency and being secretive with devices. Reactor8001 wants to say, <laughs> An ex of mine met almost all of the red flags criteria you posted and more. One was when I was organizing my storage shed at my parents' place. She threw out all of my letters and other stuff from previous girlfriends. Ones that treated me way better than she did, I might add. Her hypocrisy was evident in that she could get rid of my stuff, yet still keep stuff and be in contact with her previous guy. I openly told her I didn't like it, but I wasn't going to stop her. Just be open with me is all I ask. Well, she started sneaking around behind my back. I wasn't dumb and new. I just had no hard evidence to call her on, but there is always tells if you pay attention. When I did, I turfed her to the curb. She then claims I was controlling. I never stopped her from doing anything, which was her way of demonizing me to make herself feel better because me not liking her, talking and seeing her ex is controlling in her eyes, but her turfing all my stuff. Telling me I can't drink soda anymore and try to take over control of my home is not. Ah, good on you for seeing the red flags, OP. It sucks how it happened not once, but twice. And warranted, it is easier to see the red flags the next time around. I'm sorry you had to travel all that way to find out, but it ended up in your favor in the end. I'm glad you didn't take her back the second time. Way to go, OP. Have you ever found out about a cheating partner like this? How did or do you manage a long-distance relationship? Let us know in the comments. Next up, a father with the best intentions. My story plus one year. This is my first post, but found this sub helpful in the last year, knowing I'm not alone. It has been one year since my life was flipped upside down. Here is my story. My ex and I met in 2008 in our early 20s. Our lives together had some great times and rough times, but I was with her through all of it and never wavered. She has a medical condition that created tension with our relationship 
and made our lives difficult a number of times. We had our daughter in 2011, and I love being a father. It is the most important thing to me. In 2018, my ex was involved in a serious car accident that nearly killed her. I was with her while she was in the hospital for a month and the years after while she rehabbed. D-Day, March of 2022, she told me she was going to stay with a friend who was in town for the weekend. I encouraged her to go have fun. She was texting me while she was out, but it wasn't with a friend. She was with her affair partner. Her friend that she was allegedly with had unfriended me on social media that weekend, and that is when I became suspicious. When she returned home Sunday morning, she was acting very strange and said she had to take one of our dogs to the dog park. She started a load of laundry and left. With my suspicions, I went through her suitcase and found lingerie in the liner of the suitcase. I was on the phone with my best friend and he said maybe it was nothing, but I knew. I got off the phone and called her and asked, are you cheating on me? She responded with, yes. And I told her to stay away while I packed my things as I was leaving. She came home right away and confessed that she had been dating another man for two and a half months and was planning to leave me during the summer and move to another state with her affair partner and take our daughter with her. Two months prior, while I was home with our daughter and her friend for a sleepover, she was out with her affair partner. All of this news destroyed me. The next day, I was in my lawyer's office going through my options to ensure I protected my rights as a father. I also talked to my ex to see if there was a way we could work it out between us. My main priority was my daughter's well-being. She informed me that there was not. We sat our daughter down and said that we were no longer going to be a family together. This broke me. The next several weeks were extremely tough. I didn't eat, I didn't sleep, I barely worked. We made an arrangement where our daughter would stay home and we would alternate our weeks at home with her. That lasted about three weeks and then I had enough. I had my lawyer draft papers to have her served. I moved out two days before while she was out of state with her affair partner. I took the household things that I wanted and she was furious. Then she was served at home two days later and went ballistic. We spent the next several months coming to terms for our parenting plan. She made threats that I would pay. She finally agreed to my proposal and we finalized the plan in the fall of 2022. We had to go before a judge and when I walked in, she was with her affair partner in the courthouse. That was the first time I met him. We have settled into the parenting plan and my daughter is with me most of the time, including school. I'm still close with most of my ex's family as I love them and consider them family. I hope I can continue that relationship. I met a new woman who has been patient with me and listens. We are there for each other and it feels refreshing. I want to tell my story because I respect those that have allowed themselves to be vulnerable while feeling this pain. I have gained so much strength from all of you. I still have tough times, but it's getting easier. I hate being a part of this club, but thankful I'm not alone. Take one step at a time. We will all get through this. Here for those that need someone. Let's see who else is in the community and may need someone. JM Legend 22 says, Good on you. Glad you got your daughter. Some people are just so defeated when someone cheats and they forget to protect their child. You are proactive. I commend you for it. Hope the new relationship works out. Irish Wave wants to say, Ugh, saw this all the time when I worked at the supermarket. The amount of customers who just thought they could yell at younger and or thinner people using the few drivable carts we had because they don't look like they need it. Wish I could have responded with what I was thinking and know it wouldn't cost me my job. I'm sorry, OP. I can't imagine how hard that must have been to sit down with your daughter and tell her that the family was essentially breaking up. I'm sorry this happened to you. Your ex definitely doesn't seem like she has the best interest of your daughter. Her actions seem very selfish. It is nice to hear that you have your daughter the majority of the time and are still very close with the maternal side of the family. That speaks volumes about the kind of person you are. Thank you for telling your story and allowing yourself to be open and vulnerable with us. What would you have done in this situation? Lastly, an OP enters the dating scene after some long, loveless years. I am going on a date after five years. 14 March 2023. I, 35 female, am going on a first date after five years. I'm not a prude or anything. Before this, I used to be married. My ex and I have been married for seven years. It ended because he cheated on me with a colleague of his. I only found out because that colleague's husband, Sam, 37 male, told me the truth. Sam had a suspicion that his wife was having an affair, so he hired a PI and looked me up. He gave me the evidence of my husband cheating. I was devastated to say the least. I sacrificed a lot for this man. I moved out of town because of his job. He said he wasn't ready to have kids. I was okay with it, even though I wanted them. 
I didn't accept a high paying job because he said that it will cause a rift in our schedule. I was stupid. His cheating was like a last straw for me because I had done enough for this man and all I got was dishonesty and infidelity. He wanted us to reconcile and really broke it off with a fair partner to work on our marriage, but I denied. This was a deal breaker for me. The divorce was messy. Sam's was messier than mine because they have a four-year-old daughter together, but he sorted it out and got full custody. It's been a year since we've both been divorced. During the separation period, Sam and I talked a lot. We were going through a tough time and only we can help each other. I saw him as my friend until we both started developing feelings for each other. I did the smart thing by telling him the truth. He also said he feels the same way about me. We both agreed we would not do anything until the divorce is finalized. After the divorce was finalized, we talked and came to a middle ground that we will not date immediately. Rather, we will sort things out about our life and go to therapy. For one year, we will have a minimum contact, and if after a year we still feel the same way, we will go on a date. It's been a year now. I've been doing better than before. I went to therapy and sorted things out, mostly, but there is room for improvement. Sam called me yesterday and asked me out on a date. I don't know why I felt like a teenager. The last time I went on a date was five years ago with my ex-husband. I did ask him then to take me out or even asked him out on a date, but he would make some excuse every time, so I just gave up. I said yes to Sam. I once thought that after a year he would realize that he had no true feelings for me, but he does. He remembers our promise. It feels so nice to be seen and appreciated once in my life. It is so nice to feel alive again. I spent my youth on a man who only gave me the short end of the stick, but I don't know. I am hopeful with Sam. I know I'm past my window of having a child naturally. I'm in my mid-thirties and know that the dating world will be much more cruel to me, but I am hopeful for the first time it will be good. I will go out tonight. I'm wearing my favorite red dress that I haven't worn in years. Maybe wear some makeup and do my hair. I am excited. Wish me luck. Update on the same post. Well, he canceled the date because his daughter, Anya, had a high fever. I was a little sad because I was looking forward to it. I asked him if I could bring some soup for Anya. He was hesitant at first, but said I could. I have met her once before. She is a good kid, but sometimes can be a very active and mischievous. I guess it's normal for a kid. I brought some chicken and vegetable soup. Sam wasn't kidding when he said she had a high fever. That poor girl was shaking. Sam fed her the soup and medicine. Then we had dinner at his place. I know it's not the type of date I expected, but I enjoyed it. We talked a lot about things we did in a year. He told me something serious that he will always see Anya as his number one priority. He loves her and he doesn't expect me to uplift the burden of motherhood if I don't want to. He knows being a step parent can be difficult. I said that is okay, but we need to date ourselves first before making any further decisions. He also promised that he will take me out to dinner next week, so I might make an update. I think this is good for both of you, OP. Not just in the dating sense, but having that person who understands the struggles of what you're both going through. I'm sorry that your ex held you back from the life that you deserved, but now is an excellent and fruitful time to do all the things that you felt missed out on. Additionally, it's also nice to see Sam being so open and upfront from the start in regard to his daughter being his priority. Honesty like that is important, especially when you're both navigating new worlds and a dating scene. I had sex with the other betrayed spouse, 18 March, 2023. I made a post here earlier that I got cheated on by my ex-husband. He had an affair with his coworker, which I came to know because the coworker's husband told me. I divorced my husband a year ago. The other betrayed spouse, Sam and I, developed feelings for each other and decided we would wait for a year to see if we still wanted each other. He asked me out on a date after a year and I was excited. If you saw my last post, you would see I made an update that the date didn't happen because his daughter got sick. Well, he asked me out on a date last night again. He says I deserve a proper date that he had promised a year ago. I asked if his daughter was okay because she was sick. He told me his daughter was doing much better now. Currently, she is with his sister because they are having a cousin slumber party over there. I said, okay. He took me out to a restaurant. He checked up on his daughter a few times to make sure she was okay. I love seeing him being a caring father, but he put too much attention towards me also. He complimented me and I blushed. It felt really good to be seen again. My ex stopped doing that a long time ago. He said I was beautiful and he has been dreaming about this date for a year. I did too. We talked about our lives, our childhood, our school. We also talked about our exes, but mostly it was just us discussing what we did in the past year. I don't know what was happening. 
I felt this huge flush in me whenever he would lean forward to whisper something in my ear. I felt like a teenager again. We decided that we would take things slow, but I was really tipsy and so was he. I initiated a kiss between us. He kissed me back too. Then he took me to his apartment and we started making out again on his couch. He suggests that we should take it to the bedroom because it was more comfortable. From that moment, we took each other's clothes off and yes, we had sex. I can't tell you how mind-blowing it was. Maybe because I haven't had sex in the past five years. I mean, my ex and I did it, but it just felt really robotic. But with Sam, it was different. It was more intimate and passionate. He would praise me in between by saying that he loves my body and he has been waiting for this ever since he saw me. That it is way better than he had imagined it would be. I would agree. After learning my ex cheated on me, I had some self-esteem issues. I thought that he just got bored with me because I wasn't good enough. But after being with Sam, it gave me a boost of confidence. I know we aren't supposed to hook up on the first date, but I don't know what came over me. Maybe it was the alcohol or maybe it was because we had so much pent up emotions over the last one year. Maybe it's both. In the morning we talked about it, that we still wanted to take things slow, that we should get to know each other and build a trust first, but we do not regret what happened last night. I asked him about what he meant that he waited for me since the moment he saw me. He was a little embarrassed and said that he was already checked out of his marriage when he discovered his wife's affair. He just didn't feel that love anymore. When he saw me at the restaurant, he said he fell for me, that I gave him a little hope, but he was still unsure because he was already in a roller coaster of emotions. He decided to wait because it is silly to make a move based on his infatuation. Plus, he didn't know if I felt the same way. At last, we decided we would take it slow. He said that he doesn't want to officially introduce me to his daughter because he needs to be sure this is going somewhere and hopes it is in the positive direction. What can I say? I was really flattered. I don't know if we will last or not, but I'm really hopeful for the future. Start for making this into my personal diary. Take care. Let's see how the community reacts. Chanel Sox says, Given the guy, sorry, other betrayed spouse, has full custody and that they got to know each other for a time and then decided to take a year-long break before dating, I have hope for them in the long run. Sure, it might get messy eventually, once the exes find out, but given the custody landscape and how it played out, hopefully minimally messy. Wishing OP well, and hoping this relationship continues to rebuild her self-esteem. Even if this is just a little blip for the both of you, I think it's an excellent ego boost and a great way to enter the dating scene, but I do hope that the two of you work out. Dating isn't easy after infidelity, and like I said, it'll be nice to be with someone who can empathize with what the other is going through. You're both stepping through a very vulnerable door together, and I think that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing, OP. Wishing you all the best. How long did it take you to start dating after experiencing infidelity? What were some hurdles you had to go through? Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out our lounge where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there, stories.